do is uh, court with praise. He said, be thankful unto him. And bless his name. There's only one name that you need to be blessed. That's the name that woke you up this morning. That's the name that kept you in the land of the living. You've been given a call to wake up and get about your father's business. He said, give thanks unto that name. Thank you. 
wonderful and in the healing in the powerful in the changing name of Jesus Christ amen thank amen. you for being with us amen. one more time on this Sunday as I have said as I saw it slide into my uh, pastoral briefings as I have said when the numbers get better we'll do better Amen. But until the numbers stop increasing, until the number of people who are, are being hospitalized, testing positive for the virus, and even succumbing and dying to this virus, until those numbers begin to flatten out and even decrease, we're going to remain um, uh, steadfast in our decision to be safe. Amen. To keep our members out of harm's way. That is my uh, pastoral decision, and I, I hope that you are praying with me that God is continuing to lead me uh, so that I will lead this church in a manner that is uh, safe and in the best interest of the people of God. Uh, along those lines, you can always avail yourself of more information about COVID virus, uh, amen, uh, information, as well as testing sites. You know, don't wait until you get uh, uh, symptoms. Go and get tested now. Asymptomatic people need to be tested. Did y'all hear me? Don't wait till you get a cough and a sniffle. Don't wait till you uh, lose your taste buds and all of that stuff. Go now, get the test, and you'll know for yourself what's going on. And the other people who are in your little circle of family and friends, they will feel better about that as well. Uh, that information is on the state of Delaware uh, COVID uh, uh, website, and you can go and get all of that information. Amen. Parents are, are deliberating and struggling about uh, the decision to, to start back to school. Uh, be prayerful whatever you decide to do. Uh, I'm praying for the leaders of the state of Delaware and all of our different school districts uh, that they would uh, be led by God in the best interest of our children, not in the best interest of the economy, not in the best interest of a political agenda, but in the best interest of our children as well as our teachers and administrators who have to go to those places uh, and try to conduct business. Let's wait. Keep trying to tell y'all, God is up to something. Amen. God is, God, if he shuts down not just one state or one region, if he shut down the entire globe, yeah. yes. you can believe that God is up to something. Yes. And I'm not going to get in his yes. way. I'm yes. not going to be outside of his will and his purpose. So we want to just stay the course. Don't listen to the political rhetoric. Don't let anybody shame you about wearing your mask or staying your distance. Do what is good and in the interest of you and those whom you love. Amen. Amen. All right. I had to say all of that. I want to uh, pick up where I left off last uh, Sunday. Uh, I, I revealed to you that, that God spoke to me about an appeal. Uh, for financial support for the work of the ministry here at the New Calvary Baptist Church. And I, I put it out there for you to consider sowing a seed into this ministry, into this work. Uh, I said it and then somebody reminded me. Somebody came up to me and said, uh, Reverend, you have never in your 33 years here as pastor uh, spoken about sowing a seed for the purpose of fundraising for financial support and that is because I have not been led in that manner uh, for some reason God is leading me to do that and it is for a special project that this church needs if we could we would go and get a loan but they are not doing loans until the pandemic season is over and we want to do what God is calling us to do and not be pleased the, the few resources that we do have on hand and in the bank. So what God is leading me to do is to ask you to prayerfully consider those of you who can to make a gift to the church. Sow a seed into the New Calvary Baptist Church. 
I know that there are many, many people, you may not go to this church, but you love this church. You have a high regard for the work that this church does. And we are asking you, we are saying it in a manner that we believe is in line with God's will for the work here at this church. We are not trying to take advantage of anybody. We are not trying to exploit. We are simply saying God is leading us to share this appeal that you would think, pray, and act on a need. Whatever the Lord lays on your heart, when you bless us, and this is how you can bless us, you can make your check payable to the New Calvary Baptist Church. You can put a, a no, notation on the check, yes. a building fund. Would you please? You can do that by way of a check. You can get on, on uh, your phone and, and pull up your Give a Fly app and you can make your donation and make sure that it goes to the New Calvary Baptist Church in Wilmington, Delaware. Amen. There's some other New Calvaries out there. Uh, so we wanted to get where it needs to go. And we want you to pray about it for, first and foremost. I want to thank those who've already acted on my appeal and you've already made your gift and your donation and I want to thank you uh, at this time and we'll do it in, a, in another way that will acknowledge your tax deductible gift to this church. Okay, I gotta move on. I gotta move on. There's other things I need to be doing this morning. Uh, I want to, I want to uh, stick my own chest out. I want to do a little bit of a back patting. Uh, I want to congratulate myself along with all of those who are responsible for the entity called the New Calvary School of Ministry. Amen. Amen. Some of you are aware, others may not be. On yesterday, we had our commencement celebration. We uh, had uh, eight students who graduated. Uh, with their degrees in biblical studies. Amen. We gave out two associate degrees in biblical studies, three uh, bachelor degrees in biblical studies, and three master's degrees in biblical studies. I am so proud. We also conferred on my friend and my brother, uh, the Reverend Herbert J. Owens, an honorary doctoral degree in divinity. Now we did that, amen, amen, not because he's our friend, not because he's, the, he's my boy, which he is all of that. Yes, he is. And I ain't backing down from him and, and somebody will have a problem with me if you got a problem with that. But that's not why we did it. Did y'all hear Detroit come out? Oops. Yes. <laughs> we did it because he deserves it. And he earned it. Amen. Uh, he has he has pastored the Rock of Ages Missionary Baptist Church for over 25 years. And he is now the retired uh, pastor emeritus of the Rock of Ages Missionary Baptist Church, and he served that church faithfully. But but I wouldn't have done it if that's all he did. Uh, he gave his lifetime also to serving the Christian community. Yes, he did. He 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 has blessed. Uh, the state of Delaware with leadership as our state president for the Baptist Convention and he has been there on the battlefields fighting for the people of Amen. God. Amen. Amen. And he has also carried himself as a man of God uh, exemplifying the scriptures and the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we congratulate uh, the Reverend Dr. Herbert J. Owens, Sr. Uh, for the honor that we were led to bestow on him. Amen. 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 Thank you all for, for what you've done for the New Calvary Church. Thank you all for, for how you have supported uh, the school. If you're interested in going to the school, you can contact us on our uh, Facebook page, the New Calvary School of Ministry. You can go to our church website, newcalvarybaptistchurch.org. I got that. So I left something out of there, but you can find it. Amen. And guess what? I don't care where you live. You can be on the other side of the country. We will 
enroll you as a student uh, and we will continue to do remote classes so that we can help you in your ministerial goals. Amen. All right. This, this, this musician is going to uh, bless us just before we get the word of God. However, I want to introduce our preacher for this morning. Amen. Amen. She is a lifelong member of the New Calvary Baptist Church. Uh, it, it, I'm, I'm glad to say I watched her grow up Amen. as a young lady here at the church. And then nine years ago, she uh, accepted her call to the gospel ministry. And she has been preaching the gospel not only here at the New Calvary Church, but throughout the city of Wilmington and Newcastle County. She's been in Pennsylvania and other places, uh, and we thank God that he has blessed her. I'm speaking of none other than our own Minister Tiffany Chavis. Amen. 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 Uh, she, she's going to come in her own way. She has a message that is uniquely appointed and directed at those of you who need to hear a word from the young people who are serving God. And I am excited about what she is about to say because I know that if she does what she's been trained to do, she has been led by God. She has searched the scriptures and she has pulled out the message that is just what God has for everyone to say. So after this selection from our musician, we will hear from none other then Minister Tiffany Chavis. Y'all give the woman of God another hand, please. Tell somebody, Tiffany's about to preach. Go get, go get your phone, go get your pad. Tiffany's about to say something. God bless you.
get that out of the way. Thank you, Deacon Wilson, for reading the scripture earlier. So I pray that you guys have put a finger there, a pause there, because that is the scripture of my text this morning. Um, Job chapter 1, All right. verse 20 through 21. All right. And if you got it, y'all can send them hearts. And I'll say it again if you missed it. Job chapter 1. Two verses this morning. Verse 20 and verse 21. Um, Deacon Wilson read the King James Version this morning. I'd like to read it in the NIV. And it reads, At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, right. and naked I will depart. Mm. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Amen. May the name of the Lord be praised. You may be seated. Amen. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Lest you speak, I have nothing to say. Hide me behind your cross so they may not see Tiffany, but they may see you in me. Lord, somebody is looking for a rainbow word, and I pray this is the word that they are looking for. Heal, deliver, and set free as only you can. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So here we are, just in the first chapter of Job, and the chapter starts out with a beautiful introduction. Job had it going on. He had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, and a very great household. Yes, the sir. Bible says that Job was the greatest of all the men of the East. Though he was upright and perfect and had plenty, Job also experienced loss after loss after loss. Right. The loss of anything can be overwhelming. The loss of a person can be painful. The loss of a house or a job can be a hard pill to swallow. The loss of a child, a spouse, or someone could even have God could even have one wondering if God is even real. Amen. Have you ever experienced a loss before? Amen. I know we are living through a pandemic and many of us have experienced a loss after loss after loss. You may have lost your job and now you're collecting unemployment. You may have to close down your business so you may have lost some money. Amen. You, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the coronavirus is going around so you may have lost some loved ones. Is there anybody that I am talking to this morning that may have been experiencing a loss after loss after loss? That's who I want to talk to this morning. People that have been going from one problem to the next. So going from one thing to the next. My title this morning is I Still Got It. I yes, In fact, if the truth be told, Red, this is why the devil is angry with most of us, is because we still got it. after everything that he has taken yeah, from you. Yeah. You still have a dance in your feet. You still yeah. have a clapping in your hands. Yeah. You still have a joy in your heart. After everything you have endured, you shouldn't have the praise that you got. But oh, I wonder if there's somebody this morning that can testify with me and say, I've had some good days. I've had some healing. To come. I've had some weary days and I've had some lonely nights. But when I look around and I think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. So I, I won't complain. I still, I still got it. So pain, pain, pain has brought Job to, to verse 20. Pain has led us and let Job to a place of worship. That's my first point here. Pain will lead you to a place of worship. Place of worship. I'm in the book. Job chapter 1, verse 20 says, Then Job, uh, in the, in the uh, King James Version, it says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down to the ground All and right. worship. Right. But then King, then the new, uh, the NIV version says, Then Job got up 
tore his robe and shaved his head. Right. Now, after all that Job has lost, now he decides to get up. Well, first of all, that's a message for some of us because some of us have got stuck in the rut. Some of us don't even want to move. But now, Job, after Job loses everything, what the first that? thing he does is get up. Oh. Hello, good morning, wake up. Brad said it this morning, he said, go on and get up. He was already preaching my message. So I say it again, get on up. Get, get on up. up, get up. So, so Job is teaching us that the first thing you have to do when dealing with pain is that you got to get up. You yeah. got to move from the place that yeah. you are in. Doesn't that speak volumes? Even in a low place. He, has anyone had a day where everything that could go wrong did go wrong? Yeah. You just got over one thing and here is something else. I mean, we just fixed the steps and now here is the roof. You pay one bill and now here is another thing. Just an emotional roller coaster. Well, we just started off this year by right, singing, oh, we're blessed in the city and we're blessed in the field. Right, right. And now that we're here, we're singing, oh, Lord, deliver me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Oh. The, the Bible says in Psalm 91 and 1, it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There is a place for you to go to bring your pain. And Job realized that, so he humbled himself. Right. And he shaved his head and ripped off his robe, coming down just as he was to worship. Yeah. The Greek word for worship is pronisco. Got you. Uh, which means to bow down and reverence. Sometimes we have to let the tears fall. Sometimes we have to let the makeup go. Sometimes we just have to rip off everything and become naked before uh, the Lord. Yeah. This is the yeah. way that he wants because the Bible says that they that worship me must worship in spirit and uh -huh. in truth. Now is not the time to put on. Now is not the time to actually yeah. make other people think that you ain't got yeah. nothing going on. Uh -huh. Joe wasn't worried about everybody else. He brought his problem to yes. the Lord yeah. and again to yeah. worship. Yeah. 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 Where is your worship? You Where have to it? find a place of worship. If you can't come to the church, go to the bedroom. If the bedroom isn't comfortable, go to the closet. If the closet ain't comfortable, go to the bathroom. Yes. If the bathroom ain't comfortable, go to the hallway. Wherever you are, you got to find a place of worship. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Secondly, pain has to be kept in proper perspective. I have a burning question. How is it that you can lose everything and still worship God? Uh -huh. Joe wanted us to know that in 21, he said, Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and I shall return thither. Thither, and the Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Many of us are so immature in our faith, we only want the God that gives. I know. Ooh, I knew I wasn't going to get no amen there. Amen. He prepared me for today. I'm all right, Brad. I was ready. I was prepared. He said, many of us only want the God that give. We want the prosperity God. Yeah. We want the God that, we want his hand, but we are far from the heart of God. All right. Now, Job wasn't worried about the hand. He, he was worried about his heart. Heart. Yeah, and worship will move the heart of yes, God, yes. not the hand of God. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 I like that. How do you know that you have a relationship with God when you can still go through something and still bless God? Yeah. When you can go through something and not turn your back on him. When yeah. you can go through everything and not curse God. That's for sure when you know you have a relationship with God. Yeah. When you can go through what Job went through and still respond the way that he did. He's kept people, yeah. places, and things in a proper perspective. Yeah. The Lord gives. And it's the Lord who takes away. In yeah. other words, whatever the Lord takes, he replaces. Yes. Yeah. 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 Whatever the Lord took from you, he plans on replacing. Amen. Some says God give you double for the trouble. Yeah. But what's coming is better than what has been. Yeah. Romans Amen. 8 and 18 says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time right. are not worthy to be compared to the glory of God, which My shall God. be revealed in us. My Job God. did not allow what he was going through to change his perception of the yes. Lord. He did not allow his circumstances to interfere with the perception of God. But Instead, Job knows a person who can handle his pain, so he kept it in proper perspective by leaving his pain at the feet of God. Yes, oh my God. 
There's time out for pity parties. Uh -huh. There's no pity parties. Yeah, yeah. Joe, Joe wasn't, he wasn't sitting in pity. It wasn't a woe is me concept. In 1 Peter 5 and 10 says, but the God of grace who have called you have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that ye have suffered a while. Yeah. Make you perfect. Establish, strengthen, and settle you. So that means after you have gone through what you have gone through for a little bit, God's going to go ahead and calm you on day. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. You can sleep tonight. Yeah. You can rest tonight. Yeah. Don't worry about the bills tomorrow. If you begin to bless God today, he'll handle your bills tomorrow. Yeah. You've got to yeah. keep the pain in, per in proper perspective. Yeah. So much so that he says, listen, bless be the name of the Lord. Yes. Can I go to the NIV version again? It says, may, may the name of the Lord be praised. My third point is pray, pain will lead you to praising God. Uh -huh. Anything you do once is a mistake. Anything you do twice is a habit. Anything you do three times, scientists says it's a lifestyle. Now, if I can look closely in the chapter, in verse Four, Job starts to praise the devil, and the devil thought it was a mistake. If you go to verse 10, Job starts to praise God again, and that means it would have been a habit. But now here we are in verse 21, and Job is praising God again, which lets me know that it's a lifestyle. Praise and worship is a lifestyle. It's not set on the conditions that you are going through. In fact, conditions that you are going through don't shift you because you have already been set in praise and worship. Amen. William Murphy have a song, Pastor, that says, praise is what I do, even when I'm going through. I bless him at all times. I wonder, is that anybody in this house today that can say whatever I am going through, I will lift up my hands, throw my head back, and I will, I will bless the Lord at all times. He's great, I can Call somebody and tell them I still got it. I still got it. I still got it. Psalm 1106 says, I weaned on you since birth. You have pulled me out of my mother's womb. My praise is always with you. That means I still got it. I still got it. Psalm 145 and 1 says, I will exalt you, my God and King. Go ahead. I will bless you. Your name forever and ever. Ephesians 5 and 10 says, Always give thanks to God, your Father, in everything in the name of Jesus Christ. You ought to holler in your living room. You ought to holler in your backyard. You ought to be hollering and putting your hands on them bills. You ought to be hollering and putting your hands on that sickness report. You ought to be hollering and throwing your hands on your children. You ought to be hollering right now where you are and say, I still got it. I still got my worship.
he stole our praise. He thought he put this world in such a shape and condition that we would just shut up and, and take our licks. But the preacher told us today, we still got it. We still got a praise in the midst of our trouble. She said it's becoming a lifestyle. It was a singular act, but it became a habit. And then we did it so much that it became a lifestyle. Somebody put your hand together and give God praise for the preached word of God. I received that word. I'm excited about that word. Amen. And I bless God for the preacher. Amen. Who delivered the word. Amen. Amen. This this preacher has demonstrated to me. Why I can't let my preaching be static. Uh, she she came up here with power and yes. poise, yes. and uh, she projected to an audience that needed to hear this. This was a this was a coronavirus type sermon. This was a quarantine sermon. Amen. This was a pandemic word. And I pray that you received it. I also pray that there's someone who received this word that made a decision. If you haven't, I'm going to challenge you to make one. If you have been a part of this time of worship and you've been exposed to this powerful word from this young lady, then it's time for you to make a decision about the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Have you invited him into your life? I know we prayed to him, in particularly when times get tight, when trouble hits. But what I'm asking you to do is to make him a part of the fabric of your life. Invite him in as personal Lord and Savior. Say, Lord, I, I invite you right now into my life. And this is what I also want you to say. Lord, would you forgive me for all of my sins? Why? Because I trust your forgiving power. And then your keeping power. Commit that I will live my life according to your word and your will. When I hear sermons like we just heard today, these are instructions on how you want us to live our lives. And that's what I will do, Lord. Would you say that in your heart? Believe that Jesus died for your sins, past sins, present sins, and even future sins. done that, if you've given him and you've really repented, given him your life, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. You become a part of the body of Christ. We celebrate with you in that new regeneration. That's what we mean when we say someone is being born again. That dead part of you that was locked up in sin has been released. And new life is now within you. Do something about what you've decided to do today. Find a church home. Right here in New Calvary Baptist Church. That, that this is the voice. This is the medium. This is the place where you heard God speak to you. Become a part of this congregation. If this one doesn't make sense, then find a Bible believing and a Christ centered church and begin to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus.
Jesus Christ. We celebrate with you today because you still got it. You didn't lose a thing. You still got your praise. You still got your testimonies. And you still got your faith. Good message today. here, but would you pray for this preacher at home? Amen. The devil don't like these kinds of sermons. Pray that God will bless her, watch over her, and then restore that which she has expended in the powerful delivery. Well, this concludes another one of our great services. We're having a good time here all by ourselves. We hope that you're having church where you are, but we're ready now uh, to commend you to the Lord. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance and give thee peace. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep thy heart and thy soul through Christ Jesus. Henceforth, now, and forevermore, let us all say amen, 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 amen. amen. and amen. amen. God bless you. Share that message with somebody on Facebook. Until the next time. I have all these responsibilities. All this going on, and it seems like I'm doing everything I can for you. Everything is just going opposite. Anybody ever been there? It seems like you're going all you do. Boy, took two steps forward, you took five steps back, and you say, you say, God, what, you know, what in the world is going on? I was sitting in my kitchen, and I didn't understand it. And then these words came. I said, Lord, you are good. You've so good. Lord, you are good. You are good.